All right, so continuing on with World War II, um, we all uh, you know, know by now uh, we've covered that American involvement is going to really start with uh, Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, the date which will live in infamy. Um, and really the Pacific is where we're going to get involved first. Um, it's going to take us a little while before we actually, almost a year actually, before we get involved in Europe. Our immediate response is going to be in the Pacific, but we understand that we need to get involved in Europe um, as, as well. So um, FDR, when he, he declares war on Japan and Germany and Italy declare war on us, so now we have to get involved. So it's going to be November of 1942 before we actually get involved in the European, what we're going to call the European theater of uh, World War II. So what we're going to do in this video is you guys have done the uh, assignment of the worksheet that covers all of the major Western European battles, the ones that are really going to involve the United States anyways, uh, the ones on the Western front. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you, uh, since you guys have already kind of gone through the details of it, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick overview of each one. And uh, then we'll kind of let you guys ask questions if you have them, have them from there. Uh, all right, so to start off, Operation Torch, that's really going to be the first uh, instance where the United States is going to get involved here in World War II. So um, with Operation Torch, it was actually in North Africa. What was going on here in, in mainland Europe, um, the Germans had already basically taken over everything they could out here. They were in the process of fighting on an eastern front, which was going to be going to be the Soviet Union. Um, the British had been running bombing raids up through here, but our thoughts were that, man, maybe getting involved right there on occupied France, maybe that's not the, the best way to go about this. Maybe we want to get them involved in fighting on some more fronts before we try to really get this heavily fortified area. So we come across Northern Africa uh, along with uh, you know, British uh, British help. Okay, so the West, what's called the Western Task Force, we're going to get involved in Northern Africa, and we're going to be fighting the Germans across Northern Africa in what is known as Operation Torch. The big deal about this is now the Germans and the Italians, the Axis powers, they have to fight on more than one front. Just like in World War One, hey, get them to split their army up, it makes them weaker. That's the same kind of concept here. This is really a big area where, in terms of World War II, you're going to get to know this guy right here. This is General George Patton. General George Patton is absolutely a major character. Um, there's been movies that's been made about him. There's books. Um, the thing about Patton um, is he was a military historian. And this is uh, General Eisenhower, who is going to later become president, and then General Omar Bradley, who... Eisenhower was kind of in charge of everything. Uh, Patton's big thing was tanks. And these two, man, Eisenhower just didn't entirely trust because he was really, really rough around the edges. Um, there was at one point he got in a lot of trouble for actually slapping a soldier who uh, was, was suffering from shell shock. Um, so Omar Bradley was kind of kind of supposed to watch and, and just kind of keep tabs on what he was doing. But his big thing was rolling tanks across Northern Africa, um, was fighting this German general known as Rommel. Uh, I think probably the, 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 the best story that you could tell about that is because Patton was such a military historian, he had actually read books that Rommel wrote. He knew that if I'm going to fight Rommel, I need to learn something about him. Um, Rommel had written books. So Patton had read a lot of those books so that when they actually faced off in battle, for the most part, Patton kind of had the blueprint, knew what he was going to do and could kind of predict how Rommel was going to fight the battle. That led to an awful lot of success because he knew his enemy. So we're fighting 1942 across northern Africa, Operation Torch. That we're going to do that actually for uh, for a while, for about a year and a half or so before we're actually going to get involved in mainland Europe with what we're going to call June 6, 1944 D-Day. I show you this 
just to really give you an idea of just how large of an undertaking this really was, the amount of equipment needed, the amount of ships, the amount of uh, you know, soldiers. Um, it was just an absolutely massive, massive undertaking. Okay, so when it comes to D-Day, first of all, I absolutely uh, encourage you if you're if you want to watch something on this, um, the opening scene, uh, the D-Day scene from the movie Saving Private Ryan, um, I've always felt is one of the the best things that that you can watch to get a real feel for what this would have been like. And I say that because not because I was there, of course I wasn't there, um, but if you were to um, actually look into how that that all played out um, when they had the screening of the movie they actually had world war ii vets there that were, that were at, uh, d-day and there were some that actually got up and walked out um, and they asked people afterwards you know why why did you get up why did you walk out um, it was primarily because of how realistic it really was to them. It wasn't that they didn't like it. It wasn't that they thought it was bad. It was that they had captured the realism of it so well um, that it just uh, it caused some issues for some of the people. So if you want to watch something, you want to get a real sense of what this really would have been like, that would be my, uh, my, my recommendation. So we're calling this Operation Overlord, okay? Operation Overlord. And when you think of um, when you think of you know World War II and D Day and, and that kind of thing, this is uh, you know usually what you're thinking of. You're thinking of coming aboard, uh, you know, on these boats, opening them up, um, and then having to try and get to uh, get to shore. June 6, 1944 is when this would have taken place. Um, you had two different parts of this, Operation Overlord and Operation Bodyguard. Um, Operation Overlord is what we're going to know as D-Day or as the Normandy invasion. Normandy is really just a region of France, uh, this part of France here. And this is where it was really going to take place. This gives you a sense of how this was going to happen. You had different groups that were going to land on different beaches. Um, what was called Omaha Beach is probably one of the more famous uh, famous parts of this. But this is essentially Operation Overlord is essentially the Allies invading France and getting into battles with the Axis powers on mainland Europe. Now, the other part to this was what was called Operation Bodyguard. Now, Operation Bodyguard was actually a diversion. Um, you'll see on this right here, it says diversion. They were setting up what looked to be an invasion party right here. And they did this um, with the thought that, hey, we're gonna try and spread this out as much as we can. This, we're gonna make it really look like this is where we're coming ashore when the reality is we're gonna do it over here. The, the hope was that they would put a lot of their defenses over here um, and they made it very, very well known that they brought in a general to really, really make a big deal out of this. General George Patton, he absolutely hated it because he thought he was being brought in and rewarded with the, the big, huge invasion. And the reality was he was being brought in to be a decoy. Um, they actually had makeshift, uh, you know, tanks. They had, uh, you know, trucks that were made out of cardboard. It was it was kind of ridiculous, but really did. It really did um, give a sense that, hey, we're going to go over here and not over here. And, and it helped to make make the landing a little bit better. All right. So that is Operation Overlord, also known as D-Day. Bodyguard was a part of that. It was just a diversion to try and draw some of the troops away. Fast forward to 1945, and you've got the Battle of the Bulge, uh, December 6th of 44 into January of 1945. American uh, troops had come ashore. The British were coming ashore. The French were trying to fight back. Essentially, the Germans, uh, specifically the Germans, are now being pushed back. The Axis powers are being pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And it's kind of like in a boxing match or, uh, or a UFC fight. Once you're on your heels, it's really hard to kind of recover from that. 
Um, and this is what's happening. So the Battle of the Bulge wound up being kind of a, and that's these two pictures down here, Battle of the Bulge wound up being kind of a, a last ditch effort for the, uh, for the German army to try and kind of get momentum going in the other direction. They really put everything into it. It winds up being one of the largest battles in warfare. Um, and ultimately, it's uh, it, it's kind of like we say the last ditch effort by the Germans to really try and kind of push back the other way. It winds up being unsuccessful. You can see a lot of uh, you know wilderness landscape. It was fought in the snow and cold. Uh, very very harsh, very difficult conditions. All right, so into 1945 and the invasion of Berlin. Um, we've said many many times. Um, if a country loses their capital, uh, that kind of spells the end of the war effort for that other side. Um, the Americans and the British had been closing in from the West. The Soviets had been closing in from the East. And it's really kind of a race to see who is going to get to Berlin first and knock this out. Um, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, and eventually the Soviets are actually going to be the first ones to enter Berlin and to uh, siege the city. So they're going to uh, you know, enter in April of 1945. By the end of April, Mussolini is going to be killed. We'll make another video where we tell you a little bit more about that. Um, by April 30th, Hitler has allegedly committed suicide. Again, we'll make another video. That will tell you a little bit more about that. And May 8th of 1945 is what we call VE Day or Victory in Europe. Um, so if you go back to it, um, December 7th, 1941, that's when Pearl Harbor happens. And within four years, um, you know, less than four years, the, the European portion of World War II is going to be over. Pacific's going to rage on longer, uh, but about four years, three and a half years is really what the European portion of World War II is going to be.